let's see how we create a hash. So a hash, a star, the, the variable name always starts with a percentage mark. So do you, for scalars you have dollar, for arrays you have the at, per, at sign, and for hashes you have the percentage sign. So we can declare a, a hash with uh, my and percentage user, for example, and uh, without any giving any value. And then we can assign to it a list. So it's the same, it looks exactly the same as uh, assigning to an, a list to an array, except uh, uh, that the meaning of the values is a little bit different. And then you have a requirement of this being of uh, event numbers. So the, the elements here needs to be event numbers. So here in this case we have four, and the meaning of these is going to be that the first element, the odd v odd parts are going to be keys, and the event parts going to be the, the values. So this this actually key value pair, key value pair. So in this user hash, we're going to have two pairs. The first one has f name as the key and foo as the value, and the second has a name as the key and bar the, as the value. So as you can see, you can take a list and assign it to a hash and that will create the mapping. In order to make it a slightly more readable, especially when you have a, a lot of uh, pairs, you can actually write it this way, right? In Perl, the white spaces uh, outside of uh, strings that don't matter. So you can just break the key value pairs into, into lines. And if you want to go even further, you can replace the comma in the middle here with a fat arrow and this fat arrow is um, is a special uh, sign special syntax uh, syntactic uh, tool that is basically just uh, the same as having a comma except that once you have the arrow you can leave the quotations off from the left hand side so you can you don't need the double quotes anymore like here you need them because these are the commas but once you're using arrows you don't and if if the what's on the left hand side is a simple string without spaces in then you can use them that as it is so these three are effectively the same but probably the third one is the most used one because that's that looks much the most like key value pairs, like some kind of a mapping from a key to a value. If you want to access one of the elements of this hash, then you can use this syntax. So as you can see, the percentage side changed to the dollar sign because now we are talking about one single key value pair and not the whole hash. And this was similar to what happened in the arrays when we switched from the add mark to the dollar mark. Uh, so here you have the dollar user and then afterwards in curly braces you have the key and again here I didn't put quotations around the f name because if this is a simple string you don't need the quotations you could put quotation marks around the f name if that it make it makes um, you feel more comfortable at, especially at the beginning so as you can see you have dollar user and then the, within curly braces we have the key and that's how we can fetch uh, access the value of that key obviously for this we, you, you have to know what keys are in there and we'll see what happens if you don't know but in our case it we can assume that the person who is writing this code will know that the two keys that are available are f name and l name so this is the way to fetch the value the same way you can also set the value, so you can say, put the whole thing on the left hand side of an assignment and put some other string in there. So in this case we put mu in this, uh, uh, as the value of, this, of the f name key of the user hash. That's so far ok, and, but in the last example you will see something even more interesting. Here we use a key that haven't been used earlier. And that's totally okay because Perl will just assign more place for this hash, enlarge the hash, and assign this key, this value, the actual e email address as the value. So after this assignment, the hash is going to have three key of key value pair key key value pairs, f name, l name, and the email. 